Joining us now is Richard Bernstein, CEO and CIO of Richard Bernstein Advisors, who's been bearish this year. Richard, I, I don't know if you had changed your tune at all on signs that inflation was easing, but today was a real wake-up call for that moment. H how do you think the market and the Fed is going to process this number? Yeah, so, Sarah, you know, for more than a year now, we've been arguing that there were going to be three phases of inflation. The first was going to be that people would think it was temporary, and we heard that from the Fed. They used the word transitory. Then the second phase was going to be that people would say it's worse than we ever thought. And the third phase would be it's never going away. And I think today is the first time we're starting to hear people talk about phase, phase three, not using those words, but that's kind of what's in the backdrop here is, gee, this is lasting a longer than we ever thought. It's not going away. The Fed's going to be tightening for longer than we ever thought. That's kind of been our story, is that the cycle was not going to be short-lived, that you don't fight inflation in a matter of months. So, Nomura, they, they, that economics team tries to go out of consensus first. They're already talking about a 100 basis point hike for next week, but odds in the market have moved up to 20 percent or so that that happens. You think the Fed should do that, would do that? So, Sarah, I, I, we've argued for a long time the Fed should be more aggressive than they've been. Um, I think that's still the story. But here's the way to think about it. If you look at the real Fed funds rate, Fed funds minus the inflation rate, it is still, for all practical purposes, historically negative. The Fed has never been this far behind inflation. That argues that we're more at the beginning of the tightening cycle than the end of the tightening cycle. And so whether they go 50 or 75 or 100 or 125, I think that's a little bit of forest and trees here. The story, I think, is going to be the Fed's going to be tightening for the foreseeable future. And let's just accept that, that inflation doesn't end very quickly. So that's going to be painful for the economy and the stock market, isn't it, Rich? What, what, what invest? What are you doing? Are you in cash? So, no, well, I mean, we do have the highest cash allocation we've had in quite some time. But I think the, the place to look here is what works during economic slowdowns and during profit slowdowns. And the answer is boring stuff, things we have to have, consumer staples, health care, utilities, sexy, you know, like to have type things don't work in this kind of environment. I think that's what people are coming to grips with, is that boring becomes very, very attractive in these types of environment. So we're overweight, you know, staples, healthcare, utilities, very, very boring stuff. And valuation doesn't matter. Utilities are up 6% already this year. They're near the highs. And a lot of people think they're expensive. Yeah, well, I think, Sarah, defensives always look expensive at this point in the cycle. Then they get really expensive, and people really love them. They become the, the core of a portfolio right as the cycle begins to turn. And that's when the valuation starts to bite everybody, is, is when the cycle turns, when earnings growth starts to pick up, and a boring, you know, 8% earnings growth doesn't work anymore because cyclical earnings are starting to grow at 40, 50, 60%, things like that. But I think, I, I, I think the notion here is that it's what you have to have. It's not what you'd like to have. It's what you have to have. Why are you so convinced that inflation is more persistent? I know the number today proves your point. But what, why are you? It's, some people will look at it and say, actually, the monthly change was better than expected. And if, if the Fed can get a hold of rental prices, if, if, a few core categories by slowing the economy, mm -hmm. actually, you're seeing some moderation in those price increases. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with the notion that inflation is going to slow to some extent. Of, of course it will. I mean, we're not going to stay at 8 or 9% inflation forever. But will it get low enough so that the Fed will stop tightening, the Fed will feel comfortable stop tightening? I don't think that's going to happen until we see a recession. Now, why is that so important? Because the labor market is still historically tight. You know, nobody pointed out that in last week's employer report, the data actually showed the labor market got marginally tighter on top of everything. So what the Fed's going to have to do is kill the demand for labor. Clearly, that's not happening yet. So, so I think you've got a number of issues in the backdrop here that are just feeding on each other. Look, another way to think about this, Sarah, is that the, the supply uh, chain disruptions, with, which we all know and love and everybody's saying is easing, what nobody's pointed out is that the supply chain disruptions lasted longer than 73, 74, and 79 oil embargoes combined. 
This was a major event in U.S. economic history that everybody wanted to brush off as just if we could solve supply chains, nothing would ever happen. But yet they're forgetting about the feed-on effects in the overall economy, and that's what we're dealing with now. No, it broadened out completely. Richard Bernstein, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Sarah. On this important day.